One of the new features of Solid 2011 is constraints. Constraints are available within the Advanced Shape Editor for those using Solid Ultimate or Solid Ultimate for Closets. In general, Solid allows you to apply 2D constraints to the lines and arcs making up shapes of assemblies, parts, or route operations. Solid then maintains these constraints when you edit these objects. This movie will demonstrate dimension constraints. These allow you to apply fixed dimension distances or angles between lines and arcs within the shapes that you are working on. You can control these dimensions by object tree parameters as well as UCS's. Let's take a look. There are five types of dimension constraints. The first one we're going to look at is distance. So if I click distance, if you'll notice that the lower left hand corner of your screen, it's prompting you to select your first CAD object. In this case, I'm going to click on this line and then your prompt reads to select the next one. So I'm going to move over and click here. I can then bring this out. When the constraint screen pops up, you have two options. You can enter a specific value. In this case, it's eight and a quarter inches, which is fine for this purpose. Or you can click on text, which allows you to enter a formula. As you can see, it displays the eight and a quarter inches and if I click on the lines you can see that they are now constraint indicators. To see a practical example of what's going to happen I'm going to save this and I'm going to stretch this object some. Now if I edit the shape again You can see that I, between these two points, I still have eight and a quarter inches. And if we measure, you can see that we do indeed have the eight and a quarter inches. The next dimension constraint we're going to look at is the ortho distance. It is described in the help files as it allows you con to constrain the distance between two CAD objects to a fixed or parametric value along the X or Y axis. So let's edit the shape of this cabinet. We're going to select ortho distance. In this scenario, I select my first point and then I cross over and I'm going to select this one here. As I pull out the line, again, we can either do a value or add a, an equation. And it shows me that I have 18 inches. So let's save this and see what happens when we stretch the cabinet. Even though our interior has changed, if we measure this point to this point, you see that we are still at the 18 inches. The third type of dimension constraint is called length. This allows you to constrain the length of a line if a need arises for a single line. Moving on to the next one, is the radius. The radius option allows you to constrain the radius of an arc or a circle. So let's edit the shape. Go to dimension radius. So you simply select the CAD object. You see the radius then you simply select a point a second time again either a value or a text and now the radius of this arc is constrained so that when you 
edit the shape, this arc is maintained. The last dimension constraint is for angles. Again, you are prompted at the lower left to select your first CAD object. And then you will select your second one. Again, you have the ability to put in a value or text. This is 135 degrees which is fine and as you can see it, this angle is now constrained so if we save the cabinet and then stretch it out you can see that this angle is still maintained even though the other angles may have changed this concludes the movie for describing dimension constraints. For more information on how Cabinet Vision can help you become more efficient and profitable, please visit www.cabinetvision.com. Thank you for watching.